So hi, everyone. Thank you for coming today. My name is Tamara, and my project investigates how race and socioeconomic status have affected the survival of childhood leukemia over time. So for my research, I focus specifically on one type of cancer, which is acute lymphoblastic leukemia, or ALL. ALL is a fast-growing cancer that starts in the bone marrow and spills out into the bloodstream, making blood cells grow out of control. Although childhood cancer is rare, acute lymphoblastic leukemia is the most common type of cancer for children, along with brain tumors and similar cancers such as lymphoma or neuroblastoma. In the U.S., about 5 per 100,000 children are diagnosed with leukemia. But what does that mean for our community, Hawaii? In Hawaii, about 59 children a year are diagnosed with cancer, and about one-fourth or 15 of those children are diagnosed with leukemia. Currently, there are no known lifestyle risk factors, meaning that there are no real preventative measures that we can take to prevent children from getting this disease. So it becomes all the more important to think about how we can best improve survival for the kids that do get it. Over the past couple of decades, researchers have developed effective treatment regimens and the overall cure rate for the disease has exceeded 90%. However, this success is unfortunately not observed in all cases. A multitude of factors can affect one's cancer risk, and this is known as a health disparity. Here, we can, in this graph, we can see that ethnicity can have an effect on relative survival. The graph shows US, United States data of ALL from 2000 to 2020. I know it's a little small, but if you take a look at the values, you can see a pretty noticeable gap forming between racial groups. By the time we reach 10, 10 years after diagnosis, there's a 6% difference. So Native Americans, Black, and Hispanic individuals have a 6% lower chance of survival with ALL in comparison to Asian and white individuals. Health disparities like these are crucial to address. Another example of health disparities can come from socioeconomic factors, or SES. Socioeconomic status is comprised of three parts, which is social standing, material resources, and knowledge-related assets. These factors are known as social determinants of health, as they can evolve into issues that can have a, a serious effect on health outcomes. For example, a family that lives far away without access to a car may have trouble getting to all of their appointments. If they miss some, they're missing out on crucial treatment that could lower their chance of survival. Or, in the category of knowledge-related assets, there could be a language barrier that impedes on a patient's understanding of the process and treatment. These are just a few examples of how SES could affect health outcomes. For my project, I wanted to specifically take a look at childhood cancer and see how these disparities have changed with time. So my research question was how have racial and socioeconomic disparities in survival of acute lymphoblastic leukemia changed over time in the US. So my methods for this were to perform a meta-analysis, starting with a literature search. I use Google Scholar and I use the search keyword search terms of socioeconomic status, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, survival, Asian Pacific Islander, and childhood. This search refined my this refined my search to about 136 papers. Out of these hundred or so papers, I looked at the titles and analyzed how relevant they were to my topic, which brought me down to about 26 papers. And finally, after a full analysis of these papers, I found four papers that had the necessary data that I could use for my analysis. So these are the four data sources that I pulled, that I found data from. And they span a time period of 46 years. The two on the left are from before the year 2000 and do not include socioeconomic status data, while the two on the right are more recent and they do include SES data, which uses insurance status as a proxy for SES. Although Asian and Pacific Islander was one of my search requirements in the papers, as you can see in the graph here, there's still a heavy skew towards the number of Caucasian and Hispanic patients in comparison to Black and Asian patients, which is fairly representative of the population in the U.S. From this point on in the presentation, I will be using these same colors. So blue will represent Caucasian patients, green Hispanic, red African American, and yellow for Asian. So first off, just like in the first graph I showed, I wanted to see how racial disparities in the United States have changed over time. This graph shows the survival rate of each race during four separate time periods, 1973 to 1999, 1983 to 1995, 1988 to 2011, and 2004 to 2019. I found two main conclusions from here. First is that the overall survival for each group has shown a steady increase. And second, the disparities between racial groups have shown great improvement. For example, let's take a look at survival in the highest and lowest groups. In this case, Asians represented by the yellow diamond and blacks represented by the red squares. 
In the data from the first time period, survival for Asians was 71%, while for Blacks, it was only 57%. That's a 14% difference in survival. Meanwhile, most recently, survival for Asians was 93%, while survival for Blacks was 89%, which is only a 4% difference. So both groups, both groups showed improvements in survival, and so did the difference between them, or the disparity. Next, I wanted to see how disparities between socioeconomic groups would compare over time as well. This graph shows the same data, but separated by socioeconomic groups instead of by race. In this case, the two papers I used both used insurance status as a proxy for socioeconomic status. Essentially, those who had public insurance were classified as low SES, and those who had private insurance were classified as high SES. In comparing these two groups, the results were similar to what I found with the racial groups, as in the earlier time period, the difference between them is about 4%, and in the later time period, only about 2%, and both of them improved. Finally, I wanted to take a deeper dive into the conjunction between SES data and race. So this graph splits up the SES data by race, time period, and insurance status. For example, I'm going to focus specifically on the four bars in the middle um, of the Hispanic and Black groups, as those showed the most improvement in the first graph of survival by race. Between the later and more recent time periods, the Hispanic study cohorts showed an increase in individuals with insurance at all, which is the total bar, and an increase in those with private insurance as well, which is the solid section of the bar. For the Black cohort, although they did not show improvement in private insurance, they did show an improvement in the total number of insured individuals, again, the total bar. Essentially, what this means is that for both of these groups, there was improvement in SES, which could be a contributing factor to their improvement in survival shown in the first graph, as these two are the ones with the most improvement. Now, one thing that was interesting about this uh, this graph, the data in this graph, was that the total insured individuals for the other two groups for both whites and Asians, that number decreased. For Asians, it's a surprising gap, as you can see that only 75% of individuals have private or public insurance. These results could be due to limited data, as well as the fact that it was addressed in the paper that insurance types such as international data aren't included in the set. There were a couple of other limitations in my research as well. Because of the specificity of the data being compared, only a small sample size of studies could be used. So each time period relies on data from just one paper. Additionally, due to the fact that SES is only a more recently developing health topic, only two of the more recent studies contain this data. Furthermore, insurance status was the only indicator of SES. As I mentioned earlier, there are so many factors that make it up. Insurance may not encompass the full scope of its effect on health outcomes, so it may help in the future to investigate with more SES factors. A couple of next steps that would be intriguing would be to investigate the data specifically here in Hawaii. Because of our unique population, we have the opportunity to gather insight that might not normally be found on a large scale national study. For example, in most studies, Asian and Pacific Islanders are usually grouped, but there are so many genetic differences between so many races that fall under this category. So our population is perfect for disaggregating that data and taking a closer look at disparities within the API label. In summary, I performed a meta-analysis of childhood cancer survival in the US looking at four different time periods. I found that overall, survival rate increased for all groups and the disparity decreased. This decrease in disparity is possibly due to increases in insurance rates among patients, but other factors should be taken into account in future studies as well. Understanding these results of what factors impact health disparities could help us address issues to improve chances of survival for children. Possibilities could include providing transportation or housing services during treatment, such as places like the Kiwanis Family House and Honolulu Hope Lodge do. And so, finally, now that my research journey with this project is nearly complete, I wanted to take some time to reflect on the process. Some of the biggest lessons I learned were that things might not always go your way and you need to be prepared to adapt. When I started this class in the beginning of the year, this was not my original project. Since September, I have been working with two doctors at the Kapiolani Medical Center to begin a retrospective study looking at social determinants of health in children in Hawaii with leukemia. Unfortunately, we submitted our project plan in January and still have not received IRB approval to receive data. And so about one week before science fair, I pivoted and began working on this meta-analysis instead. And I was actually able to make it as an alternate for states. So you always have to keep working with what you have. And as what I did have was a lot of knowledge and background on ALL and SES. And so I went in another direction where I could still use this information. Now, for anyone who's interested in research or people that are taking the class next year, 
I have one of the biggest pieces of advice I would have is think hard about your topic. And I know that's something that a lot of presenters say, but make sure that it's something that's feasible and that you're willing to, to put a lot of effort into it. Because reading scientific papers can get pretty difficult sometimes, and it definitely helps to be interested in the topic you're reading about. And of course, be productive as possible. It is in our ELN nature to procrastinate, but if there's one thing that I would have done differently this year, it would be doing the work a little bit at a, at a time so that you don't have to cram at the end. And finally, I would like to give a big thank you to all of the people that I would not be here without. So that it's Dr. Chan, Dr. Lim, and Dr. Kendall, who hope, helped me so much on this crazy journey, and I'm so, so grateful for all of their support. Also, shout out to Peer 2 Research. We had some fun times, some good mental health breaks this year. <laughs> thank you all for coming as well.